Hello class, just thought I'd make a brief video this week to help us get started on a few things, uh, especially regarding the boundaries of Asia. So, uh, typically with most Americans, we are quite incompetent with geography, and that's just an American thing. You, know, you ask a student where the Ukraine is, and they start looking, oh, here's Michigan, there's Ohio and Pennsylvania. I think the Ukraine's right there, right? Not even close. So, uh, two things I want to point out. One is this term that is in the book, and you'll hear a lot of, of uh, the Middle East. And what, when I say this, I want you to reference the two maps that I have uh, below this video. Take a look at them real quick, and actually look at them and see what Asia really entails, especially when compared to what you think Asia entails. And so this term, real quick, the Middle East, we hear that all the time, like, oh, Middle Eastern this, Middle Eastern oil, these kind of things. But what I've been teaching for years, and it seems to shock students, and that's why I wanted to make a video to talk to you guys about it, is what is the Middle East, really? Well, it's Asia. And it's, again, if you reference the map below, you'll clearly see these, get my fingers in here, Middle Eastern countries are on the continent of Asia. Um, and real briefly, the term Middle East comes from, there's a lot of debate about it, who first used it, the Americans or the British, but the point is very simple. Britain wanted to tra trade with China, and to get to China, they had to stop somewhere in the middle. And therefore, again, if you reference the map after this video or while you're watching it, you'll see clearly, and China at the time was known as the East. So clearly, all these countries we think of today, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, all of this uh, Turkey we think of as the Middle East, are just because they lay within the middle to the east where the British want to get. So again, it kind of shows this um, Eurocentric kind of way of thinking. And then finally, um, another thing we don't think about Asia really too much is, is how large it is. Okay, And the book does a very good job in the introduction, I hope you read, of pointing this out. Um, and if you look at the map as I'm talking now, the southern eastern part of Asia, uh, half of the world's population lives there. So let that sink in just for a minute. And again, if you haven't picked all this up, start to think about it. What two countries are there? India and China. Okay? That's half of the world's population. I mean, that's phenomenal that if you really stop and think about it. And then, of course, if you look at it the other way and you look above India and China, you see, again, Asia is the largest continent, but then you see the most thinly populated area on the face of the earth, the upper part of it. Uh, the former Soviet Union, Russia, the Stands, uh, Siberia, Mongolia, and all of that. So fascinating that the continent is so large. Half the world's population lives in the southeastern part of it, and the northern part of it is the most thinly populated area on the face of the earth. And again, that concept of when we hear that word, the Middle East, think about that. Think about what that means. Okay? I hope that helps as you're reading to understand this. Have a good week.